During the Rebels mid-season trailer, Ahsoka Tano says that there's always a bit of truth in Legends. Some people have understood that statement is opening the door for the possibility that characters from the Legends canon may find their way into the official canon. To further support this idea, Freddie Prince Jr. also confirmed in an interview that some Legends characters will be making an appearance in Star Wars Rebels and possibly the movies. So let's talk about that. Hey YouTube, this is Urban Acolyte TV and my name is Prince. The topic for today is characters from the Legends canon coming into the new continuity. I'm specifically talking about Grand Admiral Thrawn. If you didn't know anything about Grand Admiral Thrawn, I'll just say that he basically resurrected Star Wars back in the early 90s. It wasn't an awakening of the Force or Luke Skywalker, a Jedi or anyone welding a lightsaber. It was all Grand Admiral Thrawn. Here's the thing. Heroes need a conflict in order to act heroically. Think about The Force Awakens. The Force is out of balance. There was the Sith, then the Empire, and now there's the First Order. So with Grand Admiral Thrawn, you have this person who rose to power after Sidious is dead, the Death Star is destroyed, and the Empire is supposedly defeated. And what we find out is that this person, the Grand Admiral, is a Chiss, which is interesting because at that time there had not been this species ever mentioned, at least to my knowledge. See, Thrawn is this military genius. Had Palpatine's xenophobia not been as prevalent as it was in the original trilogy, the rebellion may have been crushed if Thrawn had been made the Grand Moth following Tarkin's death on the Death Star at Yavin. So there was this report on MakingStarWarsNews.net last month, and the report was alleging that Thrawn will make an appearance on Star Wars Rebels in Season 3. What we can assume is that regardless of what happens at the conclusion of The Twilight of the Apprentice, something will happen to prompt Emperor Palpatine to order Thrawn to pursue the Rebels on Lothal. So why might this happen? Does Vader fail at squashing the cell of rebels on Lethal? Or is Vader called to assist with another task? Why aren't the, why aren't the Inquisitors called in to, to pursue them? So we won't know any of this until we see how things play out for the rebels in the season two finale at the end of March. So check it out. There's also this rumor that Thrawn will make an appearance in Star Wars Rogue One. The rumor goes on that Ben Mendelsohn could possibly be playing Thrawn in Rogue One. And the cast over at the Collider Jedi Council discussed this on their show about two weeks ago. And John Campia seemed to strongly assert that Ben Mendelsohn will be playing Grand Admiral Thrawn. So this brings up the question as to whether or not Disney will tie Star Wars Rebels to the live action movies. If we have the same character pursuing the Rebels on Lethal, also being involved with the band of rebels in Rogue One, then can we conclude that somehow what the rebels on Lethal are doing might impact what happens in Rogue One? I think this would be a first for the Star Wars universe where what happens in the animated show directly impacts what will happen on the large screen. A second question to deal with is, well, Thrawn is a chiss in the Legends canon. If Thrawn is in Rebels and possibly Rogue One, are we going to see the blue guy or will this person be Thrawn-like? Meaning, will they have all of the qualities and characteristics of Thrawn, but maybe maybe even their name Thrawn, but they might not be a Chiss, like maybe they're a human or, yeah, they'll be a human. See, we haven't really seen any alien Imperial officers. Previously, the view of Palpatine was that he was a sexist and a speciesist. The empire you see on the screen in the original trilogies is primarily white men with British accents, the Coruscanti accent. But in this new canon, we kind of see a different Palpatine. There's more diversity in the empire. You have female stormtroopers. There are women serving as moths. There are women like Sienna Ree and Lost Stars, who becomes a captain of a star destroyer. And Sienna 
We see her rise through the ranks. She gets to serve on Vader's Star Destroyer. She was a captain of the ship that that uh, crashes on Jakku. And we see that same ship, that exact ship um, in the movie because Rey's scavenging it at the start of The Force Awakens. There's also Captain Rey Sloan. And this is cool because she crosses paths with Kanan and Hera before they become the rebels that we know on Star Wars Rebels. And Captain Sloan ends up becoming Admiral Sloan and one of the senior officers who starts the First Order. There's also this moth in Lords of the Sith, and she's married to her partner. And Palpatine is completely understanding and passionate towards that moth, you know, as, you know, she kind of sucks at her job after her wife dies. So I think it would make a different statement about the Empire to have Thrawn as a chiss. It would help us really see the Empire in a different light from how the Empire is presented in the original trilogy. See, in the original trilogy, excuse me, in the original trilogy, the Empire is this fascist machine. They only wear gray, white, black, and red. And you easily see the influence of the Nazis or other kind of fascist groups on the Empire. But you got to think about it. Who was the Empire? Because the Empire is really the old Republic, right? It's the Republic from the prequels. And the people readily accepted the Empire in the same way anyone else welcomes change. Things eventually became worse for some people, just like all these kinds of fascist movements go. And of course, that leads to a, to small pockets of rebellion throughout the Empire or any other organization that gets just too big and corrupt. So let's look at another issue that this all raises. If Thrawn is in Rebels and in Rogue One and he's played by Ben Mendelsohn in Rogue One, what does that say about the rumors that Thrawn is also going to be in Episode 8? Because see, that rumor is that Benicio Del Toro could also play Thrawn in the movies that are going to occur over 30 years after what we see in Rogue One, right? So why not have the same actor play Thrawn in Episode 8? So we have no idea what the life expectancy of a Chiss is. Like maybe they could be like the Wookiees and live for centuries. Like Chewbacca's like 200 years old and still a puppy, a puppy Wookiee or something. <laughs> so it just wouldn't make sense for two different actors to play the same character, even though they're in different generations. It also makes me wonder about who Benicio Del Toro could be playing in episode eight. So let's hear from you. Do you think that Thrawn will be in season three of Rebels? And do you also think that Thrawn will be also involved in the conflicts in Rogue One? Here's something interesting to consider, and that's the possibility that some of the Rebels in Rogue One could be defectors from the Empire. I think it would be really cool if the Ghost crew even has something to do with why these groups of people def defect from the Empire. I mean, seriously. I can see the characters played by Felicity Jones and Riz Ahmed being defectors. And maybe you have Thrawn pursuing those particular characters for being traitors or something. Traitor! <laughs> anyway, <laughs> what do you guys think? Thrawn in Rebels and possibly in Rogue One? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section down below. Also, if this is your first time seeing Urban Acolyte TV, go ahead and subscribe so that you can stay informed on when I post new videos. So I'm going to try to post at least four videos a week now. So the best way to know when I posted something new is to subscribe. And if you're already subscribed, be sure to share this video with your friends. So if you haven't seen them already, be sure to check out my last video where I tackle the theory going around that Supreme Leader Snoke is actually Ezra Bridger from Star Wars Rebels. You can also check out this other video on the possibility that Supreme Leader Snoke might be loosely based on Darth Nihilus. Make sure to check the cards in the top right corner of your screen for those links. Just click on the little eye. Well, that's all I've got for now. But guys, remember that I genuinely love telling you all about Star Wars so that it might change your life the same way it's changed mine. Y'all keep on breathing and may the force be with you. Bye.